Fridays, where we proceed to check out all the fix that are not pony related. Why? Because, good golly, only is it a brave mind of somebody who's not a brony would this stuff be possible. Oh, you're probably wondering why I'm whispering. Well, we're here in the jungles of Africa trying to find the coming of Mini House of Vic. Yes, you see, I told you guys that I would be checking out a very infamous bad Sailor Moon Lemon. Unfortunately, this thing is so old and ancient that the links that link up to it have been blocked. And the sites that host it are currently in missing and with internet archive down. Well, we had to resort to drastic measures. Ah, help me! Help me! Oh, don't mind that. That's just my faithful assistant, Garble. Uh, you see, I knew coming down here we were might going to meet some fierce cable tribes. So, in order to give me the plenty of opportunity to find the coming of Mini House of Vic, I have personally chained up a garble into the Amazon rainforest, and now I'm making sure that the natives are going to reenact one of my favorite scenes for Cannibal Holocaust. Ah! They're cutting off my nuts! They're cutting off my nuts! <laughs> Why? Mean and cruel, I know, but I gotta have some fun. You see, the thing about this is... Carnival kind of represents everything that I hate about these guys who write these type of letters that Day of the Woman is supposed to be riffing on. He actually has the exact same mentality that a lot of these jerks write and comes from it. You know, the guy who thinks that women are inferior just because they have feminine names or they have feminine ideals. Or believe in kindness and love. It's the type of guy that just wants to say, You know what? I'm going to write a rape fic, and I'm going to show women how much superior I am because of the virtue of my dick. You see, when you guys hear him go, Mammy, baby, pony princess, you might be hearing just a jerk off his teenage dragon that deserves a bitch slap across the face. But me? I'm hearing, Hey! Let's write a rape fic where I proceed to rape every single one of the senshi and then have my OC fuck them hard! Yeah! So the way I can show how much better my dick is! Yeah! I'm a man! And it just disgusts me with that type of mentality. And I just want to strangle him slowly. Or give somebody the chance to write a fic where they proceed to beat him to death. Because he's the type of character that... Bad fanfic writers will latch on to either A, create a rape scene, or B, have him beat the main heroines so that way his OC can be show off how much better his dick is compared to Garble and all the girls to suck on him. And oh look, that has happened twice. There is a rape fic featuring Garble where he proceeds to rape Rarity. And there is a fic where Garble turns into a three-headed dragon, beats the girls, aka Nyx, just so that way Reality Check's OC can prove how much better he is, and Reality Check's OC stand-in, Spike, can be used as a beat-down tool. D do you see the problem with characters like Garble and why I despise them? So yeah, ah, now they're cutting off my, the top of my head and eating my brains! Oh, shut up, Garble. I used the second whist on the Dragon Balls to make you immortal, remember? Yeah, but it hurts! It hurts worse than ever! Okay, so I might have added the addendum. Immortal Dragon, I wish for Garble to be immortal, and for everything that ha hurts him to be amplified by 100%. Ah, and also to be you amplified by my hatred of you. Ah, but your hatred of me is so harsh! Oh, you're right. So I guess this means that every th that a tiny little pen prick would be like, well, downing your insides with acid. Ah, the things I do for you people to find a good fic, right? So maybe a little description about this fic while I continue to look for it. In the annals of Sailor Moon history, 
There are some fanfics that are so legendarily bad, so legendarily stupid, that they have become infamous with bad fanfics. This is one of them. It's called Coming of Minnehausen. It's a crossover with Legend of Overfree. Now, you know the Senshi should be kicking their asses like nobody's business. I know that the Senshi should be kicking their asses like nobody's business. But these guys don't think, see it that way. The author just wants to use the Senshi as stand-in so that way he can get off on them. And that's what we're going to be pranking on today. As soon as I can... Oh, uh... Hi, Chief of the Cannibal Natives that I sent Garble to. <laughs> we finished slowly torturing and beating the snot out of that Garble guy. So here, here's the fanfic. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Well, if only the filmmakers behind Cannibal Holocaust knew that the best way to appease you was to give you a character you despise. Hey, what can we say? We cannibals also get my little pony down here. We love it. But, uh... After Garble, if you think you could bring down Cinder here, we can't want well to make her pay for Pura. How dare they rake John's heart! Como still suffers from from flashbacks of losing, of his favorite ship sinking. Well, do, Chief. All right, Garble, come on, let's go. Uh, buddy, twitching. <sighs> Look, you also have regenerative powers with your immortality. Can you regenerate faster? Ugh. Fine. I'll drag you back to the studio. Come on. Stupid mother fracking dragon. I can't even get out. Why do I even have to bother with you? Oh, wait. That's right. You might show up in another fic one day. That's a fracking. I am playing a reading families one day after all. And I am going to need your corpse. Okay. I'm back. And I have the fic already. So, let's sit back. Relax as day of the woman, uh, month of the woman concludes with coming up Minnehausen by the Great Red Serpent here at the Treeberry Memorial Library. Enjoy the coming of Minnehausen by the Great Red Serpent. Oh, uh, for those of you who are reading along at home, uh, we're reading this from a site that MST sees bad fanfics and rips them hard. So, you might forgive me if a little bit of the paragraphs are destroying it, because I'm also skipping the riffs from the guys. This riff got to be special. We have wrestlers and kaiju riffing it. Namely, Space Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Guy, and Guy Gan. It's actually kind of hilarious, but... Kind of reading riff, or thick riffs like this would probably be hard, and I don't want to experiment on that just yet. So, uh, let's start. Oh, warning. This fanfic contains a series of elements that are not all suitable for children 18 or under for sensitive voices. Hey, uh, sensitive voice, get out of here. Okay. It also contains scenes that are erotic, but probably more simply to go for the gross out factor. If you don't think you can handle it, read on, but don't say I didn't warn you. Um, what about those of us who want a good, mature erotica that actually has well-defined descriptions and has, you know, actual emotions connected to it? How about those of us, huh? You aren't going to give that to me, are you? You're just going to write badly done porn. <sighs> this is my life, people. This is my life. Sample scene. This is one of the tamer scenes in the entire series. You know, I've been doing this job for almost three years now, and I have never seen somebody give out a preview of what's about to come! And since this is an erotic fanfic, I'd like to say that I did mean the spelling of come, C-O-M-E, not the other spelling. Just, ugh. So I even read this? Uh, oh well, let's see what we got here. While she was trying to decide, Jason went up to her and laid her down on her back. He started licking the place between her. Woo! Woo! Lubricating them with a nice yellow. While fondling her. Yeah, this is going to be one of those type of lemons, huh? Uh-huh. There, yeah, yeah. Grabbing them but they're holding them together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't even know probably how the biolo biology works. Yada, yada, yada. Right, Brett. Who describes breasts as ripe? What if 
erotic story have you been reading that describes? Dude! Get a source! Or a dictionary or something! Just don't try writing. Let it, it. Oh, that hurt. Uh, yeah, 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 the bruise and uh, okay. okay, okay. They stopped with the pr with the sex. Thank God. The fun part is that these guys are already cutting out some of the more grosser sex scenes, so I don't have to read them. I just had to instead suffer through these and then have to Sensi do what I'm going to have Sensi do, which is kick some demon ass. Ooh, background. I swear, I feel like this fic is taking forever to get started. This fic series came out of a conversation I had with a friend. What would probably happen to the Sensi if they ever went to the Uro Tsukijoji world? Okay. You want to know what would happen to the Senshi? Simple. The Senshi would kick ass. Because all these demons are, are nothing but a bunch of sex-crazed demons who only think about one thing. They'd be too busy admiring the Senshi for their bodies and going, Die, you so sexy. And while they're so distracted, Ray burns them alive. And they would die. Horrible deaths. Oh, wait, 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 this is fun. Uh, what would happen if Yu Yu Hakusho went to the, uh, went to the, listen of Overfeed world? Oh, I know, I know, I know. The boys would kill them. Actually, this is game, actually, this is not, not, this is not being interesting. I mean, Inuasa, kill them. Berserk, Gus would kill these guys in five seconds. Merely because, well, he's Guts. He goes in a world where these demons are not only common, but a pretty positive one that runs a nearby grocery store. Alright? Would you like some for this? Causes. Maybe later. That wouldn't happen to be the flesh of garble, would it? Yep. Five cents off. Not that guy. Sail Moon storyline. It takes place between the Japanese episodes 70 or 74 and 75. Oh, look at you. You're so cute. You actually think you actually have actually watched the Sa Sailor Moon series. Oh, you are so adorable. So cute. Bravo. You deserve a golf clap. In the Overfeed storyline, it takes place during Part 3, Episode 1. Oh, man. I, if only I actually cared about Legend of Overfeed. But the only way you're going to get me to watch that piece of shit is if I'm watching Bennett the Sage. It takes place during part three, where, where either Faust or sees the green ball from the idol. Whoever Faust is. I try to keep the continuity of both stories. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, couldn't digest that author's note. <coughs> Sorry. Allergies. So he cargoes the fellow diet to the necessity of the plot. A.K.A. I had to make sure that they are these characters are lifeless and cardboard cutouts and do things because my plot says so. If my plot says differently, then flip characterization! I would rather have these characters be just my little hand puppets. Fin finally, after so long of the Arthur Souls, I think the story finally can get started. <laughs> oh. I don't think I've had an intro last this long. No, no. I'm sorry to say, no intro could be this painful to sit through. Say what you will about Deathstalker, but at least he got to the climax quick. At least he got to the exit quick. At least he got the story started quickly. The year in which the story takes place in has Meyer Gasset caught in the Oh, for crying out loud! Is the author's note still going on? <sighs> I swear this author is going to kill me before the story does! For example, if one pays attention to part one, takes place in 1993. Um, I, I'm sorry, I slept through uh, Overfiend. What happened? 
Amano has a flashback where Shujaku takes, takes Kanto Earthquake in 1923. Then they confront each other after Nagamo starts destroying his world. Amano says that the event was 70 years ago. In part three, oh god, you're going to give me an explanation of this whole entire fracking series, aren't we? Well, hey, not everybody's ever heard of Overfiend, and with any luck, the Legend of Overfiend uh, will fade away into obscurity along with so many other uh, bad 90s anime, say Twilight is a Dark Master. In the scene where Faust first appears as a grown man, places the story in Tokyo 1990X. So, a little bit before Mega Man arrives. As the story seems to be a slide of answer, Whee! I said, I meant sign, not slide! Apparently no problem. The real problem between parts 3 and 4 is where part 3 takes the time of 20 years to, after Nagumbo destroys the Earth, and part 3 of episode 4 in the conversation between Caesar and his computer, it says it's 25 years after Nagumbo between 2013 and 18, figuring the dates given. Oh yeah, I remember that moment four years ago where some sort of sex demon proceeded to destroy the world. Part 4 picks up at the exact time here part 3 left off. B2 and the others still on the you know, road to Osaka. Hi, leave my head a place. Place is a story in the year 2020s. Taking this cartridge into account, I'm the closest thing I could to a milligram set to the date at exactly 2020. Assuming it would be about 20 years since the Gobo purchased the Earth, instead of exactly 20 years, because it was since the destruction of the Earth in the late 90s, 1990X era, that was allowing it to work with the Silver Moon timeline in the early mid 90s. Um, Mr. Author, um, mind giving me a flowchart of that? Because I think you lost the audience. Oh yeah, you lost them. <sighs> okay, I got a way to sell this for you guys. A ribbly wobbly, timey want me. Oh! That's all things up. Thank you, Doctor. Needless to say, this is before it takes place, before I'm at home, I don't have any idea that I'm almost the other fiend. So the sex scene between Goi and Maru has a definite merit. Um, could anybody pick me up? I'm starting to think. I'm starting to get seasick. Oh. Okay. I think we can move. Move for. Oh, come on! Please, no more explaining. Also, the idea of calling Faust's ball to Glocknar, giving it power being a dual tech, came from the movie Heavy Metal. Wow. Heavy Metal. Such a lovely pedigree. Breaking from that movie. Bravo. On the right side, it does give me a floating car in outer space. Super Moon Timeline. Mr. Turtle. How many explanations does it take to get to this story? I never made it without biting. Ask Mr. Owl. Mr. Owl, how many legs does it take to actually get to this freaking story? Uh, let's find out. A one, a two, a three, three. How many legs does it take to get to the center of the story? The world may never know. Sailor Moon timeline. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo! Good golly, this has got more continuity errors than mother frackin'. <laughs> Enterprise! Well, I didn't realize we added that slot. The timeline here represents a little problem to the story. There are subtle little elements that I drew around. Large response, this is Mamoru being bisexual. He wants to see your eyes if Fiori can make that out. No, 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 no. Fiori was bisexual. Mamoru was straight. He was trying to just be friendly with Fiori. Not, you know, he was rejecting the guy's advances. If anything, Fiori was like a motherfucking stalker. And this includes the sensei if you remember Ami's comment. That was a joke. Ami was being comical. She was being hilarious. She was being teasing. Acknowledgements. Ah! Obviously, the first people I would like to wish to thank would be Nanaku Takeuchi. We apologize. 
and Josio Maida. Well, that's who I just said I'm going to ignore Uchikoshi. Josio Maida, please tell me you actually have a better career than this, because if not, I would like to say, say please get, stop writing the anime. You're not good at it. The careers of Heavy Metal 2. No, 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 no. There are a lot of things I like to say Kevin Eastman for. Heavy Metal is not one of them. Are their ideas not mine? Furthermore, all this claim is concerning who owns the rights, whatever ser series over the manga, anime, or merchandising toys are applied to this series, too. Speaking of which, I need to ask my lawyer how things are going. Hey, uh, Matt, um, we're doing good with the copyright, right? Yes, we are. Don't worry. Oh, good. Good question. Hallelujah! 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 So far, this is all I can really think of, except to say that the part one will probably be the t team is in the entire series. Oh, thank God! It's such a visit set up all the plot elements. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not setting up plot elements. I'm an author. I set up the real plot elements. All you're doing is just setting up sex scenes with a bunch of cardboard cutouts. And all the rest will just keep getting better. Or so I hope. <clears throat> not happening. Oh, golly, all that for just the introduction. I hate to see the rest. Let's see, if I was doing this in the style of the awesomeness that is CinemaSins, I would say over two minutes of intros. Ding! And everybody is still introducing. By the Great Red Serpent. Finally, you can sit started. Yes, Great Caesar, it shall be done. The black wearing man said to his wheelchair that mass superior as he left the room. <coughs> oh, good Caesar. Such an adorable little Caesar. Good boy. <laughs> what? I had to do a Godzilla reference. My apologies. Now left alone, Faust said to himself, So all that's left to do is find the evil king. Well, you had to go to Canada first. My spies tell me that he is the big Makamoto that terrorizes the whole world. Excellent! That I know this. All of a sudden... Oh, but now to find the best way to capture him. Simple. You put a little noose, some chives, and then you get a trach. All of a sudden, a new, uncharacteristic thought for him entered his mind. Should I get pizza, or should I buy, buy the... or should I go get chips? Wait, what do I have in an event's ready to dress with course? And the Gummo and the Evil King were to meet and face each other without my air Vincent. Perhaps my new ball will show me. Boinky, 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 boinky. Holding his right hand flat, palm upward, at about chest level, he stared at a ball newly implanted in his cybernetic palm. So that's what would happen. Uh. Hey, what would happen? Uh, Vic, could you care to explain that? If the other fiend and the evil king were to meet, they would renew this barren world while destroying each other in the process. Whoops! Then the world would fall asleep, he thought to himself. The chain of cold stone images of the future. Much later, the world will reawaken due to a stone known as the Gwen Shiso. The person who holds it shall be ruler of the world! <laughs> Faust reflected on all this as the bomb stone in the face of the person who held the Gwen Shiso. Huh. It can't be. I thought Taiyaki killed her when... Dot, dot, dot. Ha, 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 ha! Ellipses. Father, our family have been very foolish to destroy the Overfiend directly. When we all we had to do was take a rock away from this little girl. Hey, Yusagi's not that little. Uh, she's very petite. So that's why he knew all he needed for the time. He set the ball off. Click! He also found out when and how she got the crystal, and now it was thinking how to get it from her. I don't know if that's just my screen having a... Uh, oh, wait. You remember that when, when his father's diary had said about the procedure to obtain the green ball he had just acquired that was called the and held power over all the bad guys, especially the one called Yotek. He said about to make the necessary arrangements. <sighs> um, grammar, this is how you're supposed to use comma? Still in Tokyo, about 27 years earlier... A lone girl sat crying on the bench next to a pier. Who? Um, who's crying? Um, anybody I know? What does she look like? D describe fanfic. C could you please describe? Um, 
Oh, please don't tell me the author's already starting to write one-handed. Why? Why doesn't he love me? What did I do? She so sobbed for a few more minutes and continued talking to herself. Ellipses, her. Elli okay, people. For those of you who haven't followed the uh, followed this show since the be beginning, if you haven't, shame on you. Go go back and watch my earlier episodes for especially the whole entire Von Doom saga. For those of you who haven't watched the Von Doom saga, I have a little drinking game. Every time that there is an ellipses, take a drink. That's two right there. Still live on this pier, ellipses. <laughs> oh, that little spore. Wait a minute, spore? Is that supposed to be? Less in her own little world as she was, Yusagi did not. You know, guys, Yusagi does have a life out of side of Mamo-chan, right? She doesn't spend every wicked moment of her life crying over Mamo, right? You watched the show, right? Okay, it's obvious you didn't, but still! Actually, try, will ya? I did not notice Mamo too, standing 50 feet behind her, kicking herself over what he'd done. Ow, 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 ow. Well, someone else, oops, underscore, did, underscore, notice. What was the point of the underscore? Th that should not be. For the branches of a high tree, Mamo was being watched. The creature watching him, in appearance, looks more like a human woman. Woo! With light, short, aqua hair. Fair skin, perfect right, right, round, supple. I'm not reading the rest of that. What's his legs? A cute little ass that you just love to pinch. No, I would not. I get a strange feeling from him. It actually feels tingly. Hmm. Must be the ASMR video. Maybe he's Cho Jin we've been looking for. Oh, great. It's one of those girl demons. Please tell me I don't have to sit through another long extended... Suddenly, the strange woman flew out of a group of buses right behind Mamoru and hid there. The fact that Mamoru was lost in himself, as Hisaki only served to make things easier for the man-beast. Nom! She waited there for a few moments to see her surge his actions, and even though the feelings he got became stronger as she got close to him, she couldn't go over the fact that all he did was stare down at the stare, stare at the girl. She had to say to herself, maybe she try cheering him up. Necessary to chose Jin. He's still cute. Besides, I hate seeing a guy just hit as fine. With that, she darted out from behind the bushes and tackled him, throwing him to the ground, almost knocking him over. <laughs> Hi there! <laughs> almost, that is, until he felt his fa her fingers dancing around the- WHAT?! Oh, God. People, what is it about Mamo-chan that makes you so- that makes some of these girl OCs want to just throw themselves at him? Hmm? Oh. Mamo-chan then felt that young girl proceeding to touch his manly bits, got up, suddenly pushed her off and said, I'm sorry, my dear, but I have no desire of banging a woman I have never met or even talked to. I have a lady over there that I love with every fiber of my being. So instead, let me take you home, let me get you something to drink, and maybe find a guy that's more appropriate for you. The woman just stood there, shocked at Mamoru's gentlemanness gasped, and then agreed, and proceeded to walk off with him over to over to the nearest ice cream parlor, where he proceeded to have ice cream and cake. Oh, real funny fanfic writer. Go ahead, make fun of the man character you don't like. Well, moving on. And of course he would, uh -huh. you have to move along. And for some reason, he's very, very tiny. Don't know why that is. And let's see. Let's see. And actually, I've seen the girl you are talking about fanfic. And I have to say, uh, Isaki looks better. She looks cuter. And a lot more funny. And end of scene. <laughs> oh boy, I still got a few more of these, don't I? Back in the 2020s, Valsid actually managed to find a lake and had no trouble kidnapping a girl suitable for a sacrifice. Yoink! Come here! 
It's already half phase as far as it's a part of his conjuration. Oh, he's actually trying to write out the spell. By the power of the glowing Lachinar! But it's a name so weird, I had to actually take my time in finding a way to riff it. Listen, my hand. I, Faust Minihausen! <laughs> Sounds like German dirty word. Command you, Ultek, to come forth from this body of water and serve me. Here, boy! Here, boy! He opened his robe, and from it flung a beautiful young girl. Hello! Open a robe, and you get a beautiful young girl. All these years, I've been doing it the hard way. I bring on to you a sacrifice. Come here. Come on. As he flew towards the lake, a great ball with no form grabs her and yoinked her in. Nom! And proceeded to nom her. Took so all he needed to proceed as a sacrifice. And then... A sacrifice happened. I will give the fanfic this. It thanks to this that I now know the poor old penis. I wish I didn't. I wish I did not have that part of my informa information in my head, but now I do. Click. Ultimate. Took to form a winged creature with dark, putrid skin, green eyes, four, four legs, six arms, and a. That does not. Having a hundred legs does not seem feasible! The, how? Where would you. How? Where would you put them? In between the legs? Uh, Maybe right on his nipples? In the mouth? You got enough fouls with cold, dagger like there. Who the F are you and what the F do you want? My name is Minnie Hoosin. I see the holder of a stone called the Quinchiso. Quinchiso? What the F is that? No, I won't help you. Would you do it for a Scooby Snack? A Scooby Snack? Yay! No. What do you want me to do? Faust laughed and then thought to himself, Father, Lachnar is more powerful than I ever imagined. No, he ain't. When you first used it, you destroyed the fatherland. Now I begin to understand why. I was you could explain to me, me, Beavis. It is written. The whole take us one of the greatest power, <coughs> sorry, of the demon world. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta say, uh, my my money's on the ballot. Use your power to find who she is, the possessor of the Quinchito. Over there. You already know she is dead. Thank you for explaining that. Where she is now, we cannot touch her. But where she was, we can access. Lupo! Gateway of glowing light opened up. That's enough for the human to step through. Ultra continued. This gate will take you to the exact time site where you are standing, but in the year 1993. Ah, I've been there. There is a tunnel which you must walk through. It is defended by a single guardian. It's a tomb of the human world. Woot. Faust interrupted. I know of her. She might be a problem. When the Gwen Sweet says not what you say, I shall return to destroy you. Yoik. In the tunnel, he looked about him. It was a tunnel of time which he heard so little. With this, he could prevent his father's death, Takayaki's failure to kill Nagumo, and all sorts of other mistakes he had committed along the world to domination. Of course, he could do that, or he could just be a big jerk. Marker is calculating mind if he erases mistakes, he would find himself in a set of circumstances as says he would not have learned that ruling in three worlds was as simple as stealing the Quinchito when he had her little girl, and may have fucked himself even worse in the process. More timeline shenanigans, old bean? His lair. His mind was forcibly brought back to reality by the sound of a whisper behind him. Dutta scream. Before he had a chance to turn around to see the source of sound, he was struck full in the back by a powerful force of energy. He did not scream out from the pain, but let out a... <sighs> it was not full six feet into the wall, but a tunnel. Um, 
You know, the time warp is not a tunnel. It, it's actually rather like a long distant cave, you know. Confronted by a woman with long gray and black hair, carrying a long key and wearing a black and white fuku. Was there a beauty that caused the tension? But, guy, I've seen clips of Rzirowski. Trust me, your dialogue is stupid. Alright, you just said, let me fill me up with that chosen dick of yours, and you're trying to say that... This is a ridiculous speech. The tunnel of time is not to be exploited by selfish gain. I am Sailor Pluto, Sailor, Soldier of Eternity. And on behalf of Pluto, I'll punish you. Castle, quite nonchalantly, and with the attitude of a god talking to Amima, who replied calmly, You are Sasuna of the Silver Millennium. You are no consequences to me, but you are still in the way. With that, he lifted up his hand and felt to face his palm towards her. Sasuna, seeing this, dug under the next air as he blasted, tripped him over, spun her key around, and ran the, ran the balls! With a loud crack, Mia House had found his nads forever broken. He gasped, tried to crawl back up, but, Mia, but Sasuna moved to his side, kicked him hard in his stomach, sending him flying back. Mia House couldn't believe this. Wasn't he holder of Lachnar, the most powerful object in the world? Wasn't he a god? He slowly stood up, growling. You wench! You think you could defeat I? I am one of the most powerful... Deta scream. Before he could utter another word, Sasuna's Deta scream knocked him hard, sending him flying back ten feet. Ugh. Hey! Meehouse said, coughing up blood as he felt his ribs puncturing his lungs. I haven't finished my speech yet, he grumbled. I am Meehausen, going up! Deta scream. Another blast from Sasuna knocked him back again. Meehausen grumbled, like growled air. I am not finished. Will you let me finish my Deta scream? One another Deta scream and knocked Meehausen back again. Okay, I'm just going to wait for her to close her eyes and then... Sasuna stood next to him as he was making his plans. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm making plans to declare my evilness to Sasuna, then I'm going to rape her. That gonna happen. Really? Why not? Because I'm right here next to you. What? Spatial Vortex. Her staff glowed, and it's created a vortex that sent it hit, sent Meehausen flying tax several feet. Meehausen, seeing that he was far outmatched by the superior sensei, screamed like a little girl and ran, still trying to find a way to regenerate his long-gone forgotten friends. And now, a moment of silence for the death of Meehausen's dads. Thank you. Let's see, moving on. There's a scene involving Chibi Yusa waking up to Pluto's death, which I averted, and Yusaki crying because, as we all know, that's all Yusaki ever did. What? Bad fic writers, when you do an anti Yusaki fic, I have to ask, why do you guys forget that this is the same girl who, after losing everything she cared and loved about, she walked slowly towards the woman who did it and was ready to kick ass with a look of determination on her face? Are you people forgetting that Yusagi glared down Metallia like a boss? Are you, you, do you people forget that? And then we have this whole entire scene featuring Rei banging herself with a cucumber. This is why we're not allowed to have cucumbers in my house. You wouldn't want to know where they've been. And then we see a small hole in her room. Shush! You're just... Yosuro! You are just... That's just wrong. I... Oh, wait. It's a... OC self-insert. <laughs> Here's the fun bit. 
Ray does not care for men. She does not like men in her manga self. F Sailor Moon Crystal. The Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon, on the other hand. She does not like men in the least. So, no. She would not care for this guy. As a matter of fact, I think I know what's going to happen. Because I gotta read this next line, because it is hilarious! <laughs> First, I'm checking himself off. But said, he did the thing most foreign from his nature. He burst into the door, wang in hand, and let her know, Bitch, prepare to get fucked! <laughs> <laughs> Ray just rolled her eyes and then proceeded to kick him out the door. And out of her country. And out of humanity. For the sake of good of all. And the original effect the demon is doing his usual thing, checking out the demon demonic language, trying to see where everything's going on, figuring out that yes, Yasagi holds the Gwen Shiso. And that he has the perfect way to get his little butt handed to him. You know, guys. If I'm on a small side, seeing the uh, riffs like this, mm, I kind of miss this old style of MST, you know? I, I really do. I mean, back in the old days, way, way, way back in the early days of fanfiction.net, before fanfiction.net really took off and all that, and back when fanfiction used to just be sent via letters and email and mailing lists. This other thing was very easy to do and very common. And back in the old days, people from all over used to do cool things like this, where they would take a bad fic and riff it with their own characters. Such as, say, using Godzilla, Godzilla Kaiju to riff on a bad fanfic while they're being tortured by somebody else, or... Even using the wrestlers to riff on bad fanfics. They used to do crossover fix together. This was way, way back in the history of old days of fanfics and oh, internet fanfics. And, and I kind of miss it. Nobody really does this type of thing anymore. Or if there are any good fanfics ever seen size, I don't know of them. I mean, granted, I've long since moved beyond this and have been focusing on reading only good fanfics. Which, thank God, I've been fine. Thank God, with the help of you wonderful audience members out there and the rest of the universe, I've been able to find some pretty dang good stories. Uh, the problem is... I don't know why everybody stopped. Maybe they just couldn't find any more good ideas or... With the way certain fanfics are made now, it's kind of easier to find good ones. Kind of like how it's hard to accidentally make a bad film anymore, and you gotta hope and pray that you can actually find one that isn't a, isn't a multi-billion dollar ideal. Because certain movies are basically left up to a matter of opinion. Well, that's enough. Heck, I even used to have my own riff videos on this site, site where I used Sonic, Shadow, and Goku to riff MST, riff bad movies. I still use Sonic, and Shadow, and Goku to this day to riff things, and it was all because of this idea. Granted, the only reason why I don't read things like this as much anymore is, yes, I do focus on good fanfics, but I still love reading the occasional MST because, hey, it's like why I prefer the nostalgia critic when he's not being a serious analyst. I like watching back. I like having a good laugh. I like staying back and relaxing and just getting away from my troubles. Not that I have very many troubles now, but you know, sometimes a good laugh is a necessity in your life. Okay, enough reminiscing. Let's get back to the stupidity, shall we? Moving on, the TV Yusa wakes up, tells Yusaki about the horrible dream. Yusaki, for some reason, doesn't seem, seem to care. It takes her a few minutes to re-energize, because Yusaki doesn't, you know, immediately race out to help. And then everybody walks in on Ray with the OC. 
However, since that did not happen, we're skip it, skip it. And the author again proceeds to pull up, pull off one of those things I hate, you know, throwing in random Japanese words. But unfortunately, he misspelled them, so half of I know what he's saying. And so, the next mo morning, meanwhile, Faust, because it's very important we knew that this was happening at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, awoke from his slumber and proceeded to study everything, look it up, and even made his way to Malachi's ma mansion. Wow, y you know what? I always wondered what happened to Nephrite's mansion. Did it dissolve? Did it go by? Did, did it just fade away into existence? Or did it just disappear? I got plenty of things I could ask for in, in the 90s. Malachan apparently gets worried, moves there, and we cut to the aftermath of a fight scene, where the Sensei are standing over the corpses of two monsters. Minako has her left bean chain wrapped around one of the locusts' necks, snapping it, while Rei is proceeding to use Burning Mandala to burn the other monster down into good of the ass. Isaki weighs happily to Malachan. Hi, Malachan! I'm sorry, but uh, these monsters are kind of weak, so we can't get your buds early. Makoto, you wouldn't even be- Makoto just smiled. You wouldn't believe the amount of recipes I've actually found for cooking these guys. I've actually wanted to try some. Makoto just chuckled as he proceeded to pick up the mo monsters and then walked away. Apparently, uh, just grabbing uh, Venus stops her from being able to perform the gestures for her love me chain or um, crescent beam according to the fic. But we know that's bullcrap. If the monster was really bear-hugging Venus, this would happen! Crescent Beam! Minako said, firing her crescent beam through the monster's stomach, cutting it. The monster looks shocked. Wait! I thought you needed to do hand gestures and all that! Minako just shook her head. That's only an animation error, you dipstick! It's only meant for stock footage to increase time of a scene. I could just do this. Minako said, holding up her fingers and firing another crescent beam into the monster's heart, killing it. Minako just shrugged. Please tell me there are stronger monsters in this fig, author, because these guys were putzes. Makoto just, just nodded. Yeah, this one guy thought he could absorb my sparkling white presser. We all know that's stupid. How? It doesn't even make sense. Don't worry, girls. I'm certain this guy actually has some real opponents for you to fight. I hope. Meanwhile, Mamoru leaves, abandoning the girls, because we all know you were doing that! And he gets accosted by me, House, and proceeds to see a whole bunch of scene scenes that, quite frankly, would bore even Shadow. My god, man, get on with it! If you're going to put in some good sex scenes, at least make it well written! I'm sorry, Shadow Coon, but it ain't happening. Seriously, I don't think this guy knows anything about how sex works. He then proceeds to insult Mamoru's intelligence. Mamoru shakes his head and goes, Are you kidding? You really expect me to believe that this is what they're going to do? Putting in a badly done sex scene? Get out of here! <laughs> me also does strike and went, Fine, I'll just get up at you anyway. What? Hey, I gotta fix the rest of the fix somehow. Yoink! Mihauza couldn't help but chuckle as he kidnapped Mamoru Chan. Somewhere, Isagi woke up, felt around for her bros, and went, Oh, no, don't tell me that's my... <gasps> she let out a guess. My Mamoru Chan's the trouble sense of tingling! Isagi did frown. Why do I even have one of those? She let out another sigh. Hmm, I don't think my dream of is Mamoru Chan being my big brave knight riding on a white horse is ever going to come true. That was when Mi Housen appear before appear, appear before her. Yusagi, I am here for your Gwen Shiso. Let me take it or Yusagi smart. I got a better idea. What? Take me to the future. But leave Mama Chan in, in my place. What? I'll take the Gwen Shiso with me. What? And and then you can kidnap me and give him a white horse. You want me to give him a white horse? Uh huh. And and and, and a lock sword. You want me to give him a long sword and a white horse while I kidnap you? Yep! But sorry, see, so Saki did put on the Gwen Shiso, walked over to his side. Okay, I'm ready to go! I... 
No, I don't want to kidnap you. I just wanted you to say so. Yasaki shook her head. No, 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 no. You don't get away with this. I am going to have my dream date of Mamuru-chan riding on a white horse coming to save me, and you're not taking it from me! Yusaki then leaped upon me and I was like, grabbed him by the shirt. Now kidnap me and take me to the future before I beat you to you! Me, Housen, look at Yusaki's surprise that Yusaki wanted this. Not it. Teleported. It's let's place this one Mamuru-chan to start running into the future. Meanwhile, in the fixed actual storyline, um... Yusaki finds that the Quincy Shiso has been taken from Mamachan, starts exploring, and that's when he find see in the other sense he find out that yes, Mr. Biggest Dickus has actually ta taken both Mamachan and the Quincy Shiso, and they both leap into the portal, leaving out to the other side of the gate, winding up at the Tokyo of the year 2025. If man was still alive, the world was completely destroyed, looking very much like New Jersey on a bad day. I don't know what a good day is in Jersey. I don't think anybody does. You saw you and chan wake up and find himself in the year 2020. You saw he was not pleased. Darn you stupid monster! I said you kidnapped me and you keep Mama chan No, I'm not doing it, Meehauser gr grumbled as he disappeared. And you can just forget about me, me, me letting you ha give your boyfriend a freaking white horse. Yusagi grumbled as four demons proceeded to come up right behind her. In an instant, she transformed into Sarah Moon and disintegrated all four of them. Then she proceeded to look around. I then called out, And what type of cheap apocalyptic future is this? What? This all looks like it's a ripped off of a bad Fallout game. Probably Brotherhood of Steel. Wait, you play Fallout games? Yeah, all the time. But... She sighed and grumbled. I could have better than me. After shaking her head and not thinking about her her ability to play Fallout 3 well, but just not as well as her other companions, she grumbled. Now, you are taking me to a dark tower. I'm going to find one! Meehauser was shot and shook his head and yelled, Absolutely, uh-uh. I'm not kidnapping you. I want to use Mamoru-chan for my own advantage. Isagi then grabbed Mamoru. Still, uncause his body held her close. No, you can't take Mama Chan. Why? Because you love him? Well, there's that. But there's another reason. What? All you bad guys do is kidnap my boyfriend, and I had to be the one to save him, riding on my white wings or doing something awesome to save him. Yusagi frowned. I want him to be the one to save me at least once in my life. Me housing down laughs and saying, Ha ha ha! This is obvious that Mama is stronger than you. You suck your arch and eyebrow, doesn't ask. What? Well, obviously, he's the man, so he must be more powerful than you. Ha 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 ha! Mihasa did disappear, leaving a very frustrated Yasagi. She let out a sigh and looked towards her love, beloved. Letting Mama Chan lay down, she kissed his lips softly. Wrote down a note that said, Gone to get kidnapped. Be back soon. Loved, UT. Turning around, she proceeded to skip, skip to the post-apocalyptic wasteland, still grumbling about how it resembled a bad Fallout 3 fic. Or worse, a bad Fallout Equestria fic. Or even worse, a bad Fallout fic. You know, the one where they just throw in the protagonist from Fallout into one of the story universes and try not to even make it seem like it's an actual story where the characters are in a Fallout situation. That type of story. Yeah. Those lame ones. I know who you people are. And I know what you did. And you are going to pay. Oh, uh, by the way, you people aren't much, missing much by Yusaki walking around grumbling. Um, in the fix, he's raped repeatedly by a bunch of guys. And some overpowered idiot uh, decided to kill the monsters and let Yusaki unconscious. And now moving on, apparently Mamoru in effect gets accosted by a bunch of demons. Mamoru wakes up and finds himself, however, surrounded by a bunch of demons. Holding up his hand, he goes, Tuxedo the Smoking Baba! And a white light pulses out from his head, taking out the eight Makamos. He sighs and then notices the note. Pulling it up, he reads it. 
and says, Yusagi is going to get kidnapped. Mamoru Chanda let out a gasp as he held the note close to his heart. His eyes open wide in shock and terror as he comes to the only logical conclusion. My love, you've given yourself up to the enemy so that way you, you can take my place. So that way you can protect me. Danny gr grinned at Terminator and growled at his face as he crumbled the note. Stood up. His cape flying in the breeze as he imme immediately became to see, see a mask. Don't worry, my beloved. I will save you. I will protect you no matter what the cost. If it means my life. In his own head, he started playing the music that he knew would be heroic. Axido, the smoking bomber. I love Serum Mew. And Maru finds herself trapped somewhere in some Emerald Fortress. Meanwhile, the Sensi are deciding to talk, talk about how to get into the time portal. Meanwhile, the real Sensi are looking on in shock that Yusagi had left. Ray grumbles. Oh, no. Don't tell me. Ami calmly nodded. Yusagi is obviously giving herself up to this me house person for only one purpose. She's going to finally try to live out her fantasy of being finally saved by Tuxedo Mask just this once. Minako could only sigh and shake her head as she walked to the portal. I swear, the thing that girl does for love. Ray can only not nod in silent approval. Only to hear Makoto pat Ray on the back. Ray used to call me and looked up and turned her violet eyes towards her old time friend. Makoto responded. I know what you're thinking. The moment you find Yusagi, you both want to hug her for being safe and then kill her for risking yourself just to live out this saluted fantasy. It's okay. I think we're all feeling a little bit of that right now. We love her, but there are days when we just want to kill her. Minako can only sigh as she walks towards the time portal. Come on, girls. We better go save our beloved princess before she does something too reckless. And yes, the girls all walk, walk towards the time portal, morphing all at once into their sensi forms and then leaping in. Anyway, so the sensi start figuring out how to get to the portal and start doing all this other crap and also start beginning to start describing the backstory of Overfiend. <sighs> like you people actually care about what Overfiend is about. I know you people don't. You're just here to watch the Sensi kick some demon ass. And I know I'm here ready to see the demons get their asses kicked. So, um, moving on. Meanwhile, in the fic, Mamo proceeds to wake up to a bunch of Japanese rednecks. Oh god, this is gonna become deliverance. Guys, look. I am from the South. I have lived in the South all my life, and I have never once met up with a fat guy who, in the woods, who wanted to make me squeal like a pig. I have never seen that. I have never met that. I have met a southern guy with a cowboy hat, though. I never believed I would actually see that cliche pop up in the south, but there you were. He was a southern boy with a cowboy hat. Yes, I know. I'm from the South. You can tell it with my thick accent, can't you? I swear, my Southern accent is just so thick. It's like unbelievable. So the redneck demons proceed to rumble, fight, and and the first thing they do is proceed before they decide to do anything rude or cruel to Mama Chan. They, Oh, I'm sorry. Mama-chan hasn't met up with Japanese rednecks yet. He actually just meets up with a bunch of uh, demons who bring in Yusa who bring in Yusaki and lay her onto the bed. The real Yusaki, on the other hand, is still traveling towards Mini House. <laughs> Mini who's it? One of these days, I've got to figure out the right pronunciation of that. The tower, determined to do one thing. Get herself chained up so that way Mamoru can ri come riding on a horse. She paused. As she turned to her left, it saw a horse store nearby. Smiling, she went in and threw down 20 bucks, going, I'll take the whitest horse you can get! Well, okay, the farmer horse owner said as he tried out the horse. Isagi then tried the horse nearby, 
give him some food to graze, incense some wire, and proceeded to put it down a note saying, This is the mystical horse of Azkaban. Write this, and you'll save your beloved. Sign, UT. Izaki smiled. Her fancy was finally going to come to life. She would finally have Mama Chan save her like she's always been wanting. Then she proceeded to race off, killing several demons along the way with her scepter. As you will. All the while, giggling to herself. Again, you people aren't missing much of the fic. Mama Chan tries to escape, gets captured by the rednecks. Don't see they would pop up. And Yusaki proceeds to fuck herself with a bedpost. Sleep heavily, Celestia. I was, I was kidding. Meanwhile, the Sensei are still spending time trying to figure out how to get to the for future. Ah, it's taking longer to get to the future into the story than freaking. <laughs> the appearance of King Kong in the new King Kong remake? Well, Wheel, you are on the ball today for insults. I like you. Hey, Trixie, whose idea was it to install the Wheel of Insult, insult Big Name Productions? Uh, I do believe it was you. Hmm. Remind me to pat my, myself on the back layer. We will. And meanwhile, this is where Mamo Chan gets horribly, horribly raped up the ass by a bunch of rednecks. We know that. Oh, they're named Bill and Zeke. Charming. Just charming. And they proceed to go at him, him fa faster than me and then on a pizza. And in the thick, luckily the inners finally come in and uh, save Mamo Chan. At the last minute, but he's still unconscious and badly beaten, bleeding, hurt, hurt, and probably cursing that he ever actually just started showing up in this fic. And of course, this store, everybody just starts get, giggling at small little jokes that are not really, really funny. Why? Because this fic is lame. And of course, the... Got, and of course, the, some of the men are actually happy that the rednecks have been badly hurt. But again, you people aren't really missing anything. There's... They does me up with a bunch of fanboys. Oh, gods. Wait. Fanboys? From the future. And this author is a self-insert... Oh, god. How lame can you get? Not only are you doing a self-insert... One of the lamest things you could possibly do in this fic. But you're bringing in your other four friends just so you can bang the Senshi. How lame, desperate, and pathetic do you have to be in order to pull this crap off? This... No, <laughs> no, no, no. And he also me up with a very buff and handsome looking. You see, you, you see, Mo. You come on. Yep. And apparently he has three lovely women at his side. Charming. I'll be. I'll remind myself to tell Nar. Naru, that y Yukimo is cheating on her. Thank you, Vic. Meanwhile, the real Senshi have arrived. It's seeing Mamo-chan ra raise a head. Minako was the first to catch up with him. She so gave out a few pants as he finally stopped him. Mamo-chan, what the heck do you think you're doing? Minako asked. Mamo-chan panted as he slowed down and looked at the girls. I received this note from Yasagi. It says that she has gone off to be kidnapped. This could be only one thing. She gave herself to save me! Mamachan tried to hold back tears. The other four said she just rolled her eyes at this. Not only the real reason for the letter. Ami was about to raise her finger, but Ray stopped her. As followed by Makoto, who said, Girls, let Yasagi have her fun. She always has to be the one to save Mamachan. Why not this time let her have a white horse fantasy? 
Ray Grubble did this. There isn't even a light. <laughs> the five says he then turned at the sound of wickering, as Malachan happened to find a white horse. He then proceeded to pull off the le letter that re read, This is the white horse of Oxcaban. Use it to save your beloved. Maru smiled as he crumpled up the letter. Yusaki, that brave girl, he said to himself, a look of determination crossing his eyes. She knew she was going to be captured by, by some horrible demon, so thus she gave me this beautiful white horse so I could race off to save her. Maru Chan then got, got onto the horse, then slipped off of it. It was at this point the girls realized one very important lesson about Maru Chan. He did not learn how to ride a horse. Minako let out a sigh as he walked over towards the fallen common. Look, girls, y you find out wherever this demon castle is. I'll go teach Tux Boy how to ride, Minako grumbled. Meanwhile, back with Yusagi, inside Mii House's tower, Mii House looked at his fallen men. What on earth happened here? He said. Then he heard unusual grunting and grumbling coming from inside his dungeon. Walking into his private dungeon, he saw that Yusagi was trying to chain up her other arm, but couldn't reach it due to the fact that her right arm was already chained. Just a little more, come on! He also looked confused at this. He raised a hand and asked, What the heck are you doing? Yusagi sighed, I'm trying to chain up my arm so that way I can be chained up and dolled up for the eventual rescue. Miyahasa raised a finger, trying to disagree with this, but then sighed as he walked over, and then proceeded to chain her other arm. He then grumbled, There! Satisfied? Will you please leave me alone? Isagi sighed and said, Uh, maybe you could tear my foot a little. Like this, he said, mildly ripping a part of her skirt. Isagi then pointed to her top, and the top! He then pointed for the little top, exposing a little cleavage. Isagi nodded, and then proceeded to wave him off. Thank you, sir. I'll go ask for you for more when I have need of you. Meehauser grumbled, thinking to himself, She killed most of my men already. Now I'm all alone here. What's worse, he said, looking at one particular dead demon, demon as it laid there crumpled up next to a pizza box. An empty pizza box. Meehauser could only grumble as he punched the wall. She killed the pizza delivery demon! He grumbled as he proceeded to walk back to his throne room, wanting nothing more to do with this insane odongo topped girl. His only thought at this moment was how was he going to actually get out of this with anything left remotely resembling dignity. Meanwhile, the fig decides to try to reference the Sailor Says segment, and it's become obvious to me that this author has not actually seen the Japanese version of Sailor Moon. But this fact only read summaries and is only using the Japanese names doesn't make us think that he is totally down with the Japanese team. Yo, check it. And then we get some exposition, exposition, get it out ASAP. And talk about some bullcrap about the Setsi dying in 1998. <laughs> bullcrap! Yeah, like the... Since he would actually get beaten by a bunch of these sex demons, when we all know that since he would be making these demons their bitches, all of them screaming in pain, and Umanel proceeds to give out the backstory about the Chojin and what they did and who this demon was, and oh, good golly, you know, the problem with a crossover like that is, is that you've really, really have got to learn to actually start caring. Or... Make us care about the series you're crossovering with. Otherwise, it's just going to be so bland. Oh, and by the way, Umino through all this exposition and describing a whole entire dialogue and yada yada yada, he was being given a blowjob by three sex, sex by three sexually hot women. Problem. I don't think you could possibly give exposition while you're getting a blowjob. Not unless you are... Oh, not unless the girls are really that bad. I wouldn't know. And I'm not about to test that theory. Because I don't have anybody to give random exposition to. 
So, moving on. I swear these guys, I don't think they know anything how sex works. Meanwhile, Faust is doing another one of his fun little sacrifice th things that he enjoys also much, killing another innocent vir virgin. I'm not a virgin! Oh. Sorry. Another non-virgin, and after that, at that, the demon proceeds to espouse it some dumb bullcrap about how he must wash the question so in Mamoru's blood. And then have Yusaki proclaim that he is the, that Faust is the next heir in order to become ruler of the world. Of course! Why is it that all these demon rituals have to have overly complicated plant, plants in order to be able to work? Why can't he ever do something so simple as to say, plant a coin here for world domination? Meanwhile, these Sensei and the Fick have been waiting, relaxing, trying to take their minds off, and believe it or not, whacking off. Because that's what the Sensei would love to do that alone and work alone while they're doing all this. They want to work out and just continue whacking off. They don't give a flip about their best friend being in trouble. Oh, no, 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 no. They just want to whack off all the time and just proceed to do a whole bunch of other char other charming activities. With any luck, this author isn't going to be so stupid as to have the Sensei do an all-out orgy right in, fr right in front of Mamoru-chan. I'm sorry, but they do. They proceed to have a orgy. And I never really liked her anyway. I was just spout pretending to be her because she's the leader. And now they all sound like they're something out of a bad fanfic. I would go on a long, 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 long rant about why Makoto is the least amount of person person who would actually say this and why Makoto would never ever ever say this but I think if you remember a certain other rant the last time I did this was with of course a certain Von Doom fic so y'all know why I think about a scene like this and oh yeah Yusagi's watching all that just completely completely going on and, of course, Yusaki is dumb enough to believe this. And Ami is, of course, the girl who would actually try such a thing. And, oh! The author has a explanation for why he's picking on Mamoru's dick size. Go to any X-rated Sailor Moon image pages and you'll find one... <laughs> <laughs> I've actually visited some Sailor Moon hentai dojinsies that have Tux, Tux Boy. It's not small at all. But if that was your best excuse for why you pick on a, a guy's his dick size, congratulations! You are probably the second crappiest author I've ever seen. And you know what? I'm starting to realize the sad fact of it is... Out of the three bad lemon writers that we have so far highlighted on this show, this talker's the best! <laughs> I might just my luck. Uh, and the orgy continues. And it continues. And it continues. Still going on. Um, you guys might want to go get a drink, a bottle of beer. Some soda, a couple of comics, a maybe read another fanfic because you know this scene still goes on, and we all know that the story. Wasn't going any further than this. Here. here, Here's your money back. 
And then the thing proper, we cut back to the set of Sensi having turned back to their normal identities and listening to the doctors who are proceeding to check out. And of course, everybody is curious and worried about Isagi. And they were all far as falling asleep. So was I, but that's really because I'm th thinking that this author has no idea how to keep up the action or how to keep everything up to a titillating climax. I just wanted to point that out. And then Minako comes up with an idea. Oh, please tell me it's actually a fun, happy idea where we're all going to play volleyball or Minako's going to do ex exercise or it's going to do some workout ideas or ever wanted to know what it felt like with a girl. Oh, no. No, 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 please, not TV use a seventh birthday, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, I beg you, not TV use a seventh birthday, please, I've heard that look at, uh, into that, it's like looking into the mouth of Cthulhu, while taking about a hundred insane pills, while listening to the Joker give out a speech, this, that thing is not to be referenced. Then, we'll all fall asleep if we don't do something to keep us awake. Maybe look out for your friend, keep your keep yourselves on guard duty, exercise, talk about something other than sex for once in a while, you know, maybe show more of your personalities, actually demonstrate who you are as characters, or you're just going to be busy fucking yourselves silly like rabbits. Author, have you met a human being? Have you actually talked with a person? Because I'm starting to think that you have never met a human person and you are probably to get out of your basement more often. And this is speaking from a guy who's right now doing a live read from his mother's living room. So... I have to wonder, who is the more pathetic one, Red Serpent? I do believe that would be you. And that is when Mama Chan finally wakes up. Oh boy, I think there's one more part of this. Mother! I'm sorry guys, I got surprised by the next part. For some odd reason, Masato from Evangelion showed up. What are you doing here? I don't even watch Ava! Yes, but you do have this thing about uh, Asuka and me. I do! <laughs> Heaven help me, I do! <sighs> the coming of Minihausen, part 3. Yes, the previous section was part 2. And yes, it as Lee spells C-O-M-I-N-T. Presented by, once again, our favorite friend, the Great Red Serpent. Has he done anything else other than this fic? And we have a sudden, strange, out of the way segment in Dayton, Ohio. That seems far, far away removed from the rest of the fanfic. Why are we in Ohio? Why is he looking at... Why did he go into the time tunnel? Why is he looking at a corpse? Why is he feeling horrified by it? And... What is he doing with the corpse? Oh. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Please tell me he's not fucking the course back to life! You people are so glad I'm censoring this. Actually, be glad that the MSTers are censoring this. I don't think YouTube is ready for a scene where a, where a boy, young man proceeds to fuck a dead corpse until he comes back to life. Does that count as... Necrophilia, or is that 
starts off the necrophilia to being okay. This is raising too many questions that I don't want to think about. Oh, for the sake of humanity, I must continue. Now that, now that that lovely aside has been done, the girls have had their orgy and everybody has proven themselves to be about as bland and lifeless as a couple of pieces of cardboard, to the point where the cardboard has officially called me and said that they are part of the Anti-Cardboard Defamation League and they wish to insult, have me stop insulting them. To that I say... The personality is like cardboard, 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 cardboard. Hello, we are the members of the Anti-Cardboard Defamation League. We would like to announce that Martial Art Fruit user is to stop insulting us by comparing bland, lifeless characters to cardboard. We, cardboards, are very helpful into your everyday lives. We make boxes. We make planks. We do a lot of things that help you out. We... Demand to be recognized. Thank you. You may continue on with the fic. And I don't even know how I got to Disney World. What was I talking about again? Oh, yeah. Bad fic. And now we suddenly see a... Let's see. Makoto is going around for a walk, taking out demons, and even watching a bunch of fat monsters fight, coming in to fight over to make them slaves. Which I have a feeling ranks right up there with say, seeing a bunch of demons popping up normally in Berserk. This type of thing just happens when you're in a post-apocalyptic world that has been conquered with demons. And meanwhile, that's when a couple of guys... Show a demon and a black guy showed up. Thank you for the help, inevitable blank gang member. Oh, it's that blue-haired demon, and the black guy is named Jamal. Because of course his name is Jamal. Couldn't think of any other names, could you? But please tell me that this isn't one of your friends. And Makoto is just busy standing there, watching as Jamal and Buju proceed to fight the monster, because Makoto is useless. I know she may seem like a heroic character, and maybe the type of girl who likes to jump in and kick ass, but in reality, she's not. It, it, this is her character. Honest. I'm not just saying that because the author wields it. And then, after a too long of a fight, the sensei finally, finally decided to head in and help, help the others fight out the monsters. And she sees the Black Knight that proceeds to enthrall her and make her happy. Don't ask me why, it just happens. Even though we all know that she rightfully belongs to the owner of the game store. Meanwhile... We also are starting to realize that, yes, we have a couple more author avatars. We would like to apologize. And we have to deal with all of that. My apologies. In the fic proper, we are also watching more of the main... We're watching more of uh, Makoto getting her butt handed to her by a bunch of demons. The oh nice, th nice thing you know, she wakes up and finds herself in bed with the big black guy, who is one of the author's friends. She immediately goes at him. Yeah, you can tell that there's a whole bunch of characterization in this thing now, don't you? But I will tell you with all happiness that this thing is about 25% oh, done. Um... Meanwhile, back with the real Sedgy, they have made it to where Me House it is. And Mama Chan is the first one to wander down the door. He sees Me House is standing right in front of Yusagi. Mama brings out his sword and glares at him, staring daggers. Release my girlfriend, you fiend! Mama growled. Me House had turned around and said, 
No, 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 wait, you don't understand. I want you to be kidnapped and her on the other side so I can make a deal. Hisagi then proceeded to grunt, grunt going, No, let me go, you beast! You, you horrible monster! Me, Halsey shook his head. No, I wasn't planning on doing anything! He said, looking out in shock. Mamoru just growled as he raced forward, stabbing me house in the heart, killing him instantly. Then, Mamoru looked at Yusagi, and on seeing her, looking at her straight in the eyes, and said, I'm sorry, my darling. I I never thought... Yusagi just smiled and said, It's okay, my love. I'm so glad... Me house had slowly struggled to get back up. Not so lotly, Yusagi brought out her rod and bashed his skull in, knocking, taking him out once and for all. Take me back home, preferably on a white night, over your over your lap, holding me close. Maru nodded. There was a part of him that knew Yusagi had set this all up. So that way she could finally have him saving her, like in her dreams. But Maru didn't have anything bad to say about that, after all. Sometimes it's just nice to, to do things for your girlfriend on her anniversary. Meanwhile, back in the other, other fanfic fan, fan, fan that you probably have stopped carrying, you were more and more and more just enjoying watching me tell, tell that nice little story. Once again, more set since you are having orgies. Why? Because this fanfic does not know when to let up with the sex scenes. I mean, my God, I think I've been going through heart, going through heart, fight. For about, though, 15 minutes of this, and about 99% of this story says endless sex, and 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 sex, More sex than a mother frickin' than a mother frickin' Deathstalker fic. At least Deathstalker is actually somewhat well written. And the guy who was seeing all this was Mamaru-chan, who was bit, who has finally gotten out to meet up with me, Housen, who has Hisaki bound, gag, and naked. Why is he naked? Simple. See, it's up to something. Meanwhile, the ah, another Vivek, give us time to retard, give us a chance to relax, something, or at least. Give us a characterization! Look! Make eroticism all you want! Make some sex all you want, but there has to be something of substance! There actually has to be some characterizations here! We actually have to feel connected in order to make it, you know, something good! Otherwise, it's just a very, very badly done porno! And believe me, if I wanted to see badly done porno, I would watch Skinamax! Trust me, there are plenty of those on there. And not all of them are, and however, on the bright side, some of them are actually pretty well acted. And, of course, he gets picked up by a bunch of monsters, but luckily the main, why do I keep wanting to say the main six? Oh, because I would rather, rather be reading a pony fic right about now. Meanwhile, the se Sensei are proceeding to wa watch in ho horror as Mamoru Chan is about to get captured. They, of course, try to fight, but they, of course, lose. De Demons unable being able to ha being able to handle the se Sensei very, very easily. Mihazen, on the other hand, tells Mamoru Chan to co come and get him, big boy. And even gives him the power to find him. Even, basically, with a nice giant neon sign that says, Girlfriend over here, come and save her. You dork. And Mamoru Chan does. Finds Isaki tied up in a crucified pose. I would make a crucifixion joke here, but I just, for the life of me, can't. I just can't. I respect Jesus Christ Superstar too much. I love that musical. So instead, I will play another song from there.
So if you are the Christ, the great Jesus Christ, come on, show me you know, fool. Walk across my swimming pool. I told you I love that musical. Meanwhile, Mamoru-chan sees Yasako and Asli says her name, and Yasaki proceeds to splat out the obvious. It's a trap! Congratulations, Marcel Art for user. You're probably the 1,004,876 person to make use of that meme! Do I get anything? No. Oh. Do I at least get a reprieve from this story? Nope. Of course, seeing Isagi got crucified up on a tree, takes Mamoru-chan off to no end. He then proceeds to ra race off, seeing that he also has TV use in his hands. And Mamoru-chan asks the obvious, what have you done with her? Simple. I am be doing evil things, like stealing their souls and, you know, that, that sort of thing. And of course, Faust proceeds to do the you know! I bet this fix is becoming very predictable to you people, isn't it? Faust then proceeds to make the deal. Either kill yourself for me, or else I hurt and do horrible, horrible things to the girls. Yusagi, uh, Mamachan then gives up, lets himself die, and Yusagi sees this, and unlike the Yusagi I know who would bust out of there and then proceed to kick ass and take names, this Yusagi proceeds to cry and whine about it. To which I say, F you, author, go read a Sailor Moon manga before I blow your dang head off! That, and he asks for the quiz, she so. Of course, this person of Yasagi says yes. And then proceeds to laugh, ha 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 ha. And then, when you know it, he finally sees the, the other sets of you come here. Took you long enough, have it, hasn't it? It's a big boy. However, I think you could repeat after me, people. What happens? The Sassy's attacks are useless against the freaking jerk. Very, very, very good. People are catching on. And then it comes probably the worst Deus Ex Machina I've ever seen in my life. Sasuna appears out of nowhere, uses the Dark Dome clothes, and then Yusaki proceeds to use the Gwen Shiso to resurrect Mamoru-chan, the Fallen Senshi, and then teleports everybody back to 1993 with their memories wiped! I have seen a lot of bad writing in my time, but this takes the cake! And then the author probably congratulates himself on getting he and his friends laid by their favorite Senshi. To which I say, F you, writer, hard, and F this thick. Bad enough that this story hits every single note out there with badly done characterizations, badly done sex scenes, Worthless said she, and badly done rape scenes, and of course Gorefield. But it also crosses over with a bad hentai, and has horrible dialogue and characterizations to boot. The writing is crap, the stories are crap, and it's just a bad read. And boy, didn't I have fun doing this. You see, again. Some things you can actually do pretty well, if you put effort into it. The problem is, when it comes to certain sensitive subjects, you need to make sure you actually, you know, try. You actually approach it with the seriousness that it deserves. If you want to do a sex scene, make it erotic. Describe. Make some, put some passion into it. If not, it just becomes lifeless and it's all just two people going at it. And... These stories are the pinnacle of some of the stuff I have proven. But trust me, there's a whole bunch more out there. But I won't be getting to them anytime soon. Don't worry, next week, well, the week after next, I'll be getting back to the nor normal routine of finding great fanfics for all of you to enjoy. But next week, we are taking a break. We are. Yes, have you noticed we haven't done something this year? Oh, you mean Star City Anime? Yep. 
Come on, Trix. We've got some voice actors to meet and new products to purse. Oh boy, Trix, you can't wait. That was one down, a thousand more to go. We'll see you uh, next time.